judge Christianity in its pure, revealed form, rather than as practiced by notoriously fallible and sinful human beings. It is the original vision that counts, not its shoddy practice. Remember, though, that the monstrous doctrine of hell is part and parcel of the alleged Christian revelation. The greatest Christian thinkers and theologians, from St. Augustine to Jonathan Edwards, exhausted their vast powers of eloquence in their lurid depictions of hell. I shall spare the audience an account of these revolting fantasies, surely the most misshapen progeny of the human imagination. Even worse, all the most orthodox theologians, Catholics as well as Calvinists, insisted that one of the greatest joys of heaven is the viewing of the torments of the damned. Surely in the words of pain, such doctrines have served to corrupt and brutalize mankind. Cruel dogmas make cruel people. Now, Dr. Parsons then raised a third point, that hell is an awful doctrine. Well, what I would simply say here is that hell is the result of persons who freely separate themselves from God. It is not a result of God's will or desire. The Bible clearly says God's desire is that every person should be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, and that's why he gave his son, so that everyone would come to know him. The only reason that everybody doesn't go to heaven is because some people freely separate themselves from God forever. So yes, this is terrible, but it's simply testimony to the depravity of man that it would spit in the face of God and the, the gift of his grace and forgiveness. So on the contrary, I would say Christianity is good. It is good news. It is the most wonderful news that has ever been announced. Okay, <clears throat> uh, concerning hell, uh, Professor Craig says that humans freely choose hell. You freely choose hell. God doesn't send you to hell. You freely choose hell. Now, folks, anybody who freely chose eternal torment over eternal bliss would be a lunatic. And lunatics deserve treatment, not condemnation. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so I'm going to have to see some justification for this. That, uh, that, uh, they and even if we freely choose to rebel against God... Again, why should God attach so horrible a penalty to it? God is supposed to freely offer us salvation. This is supposed to be a free gift. Uh, we're supposed to have free will. We're supposed to be able to freely choose to accept or decline that gift. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the same sort of free will that is given you by the mugger in the alley who holds a pistol to your head and says, give me your wallet or I'll blow your brains out. Yes, you have free will. You don't give him the wallet, he blows your brains out. Same thing is given to us by God. You know, believe in me, love me, trust me, believe all this nonsense I've written in this ridiculous old book, or I'll send you to hell. Folks, I cannot, it's not that I don't believe it, it's not that I have a bias against the supernatural, folks, I cannot believe such things. Finally, with respect to the doctrine of hell, he said anyone who would reject God as a lunatic, and lunatics deserve uh, mercy, what I would say here is that God's, the demands of God's justice must be met. God is a holy God, cannot simply blink at sin. Otherwise, we don't live in a moral universe, and therefore sin must be punished. Thus, we are morally obligated to believe in God. We are morally obligated to worship Him and to love Him as the supreme source of goodness and truth. But we have the freedom to disobey, in which we have to bear the consequences, just as when one of my children has a moral obligation to do what I say, but they have the freedom to disobey, in which case they're disciplined. 